Hey everybody, in this iClone Basics tutorial, we're going to talk about the Transform tool. So the Transform tool is basically how you can move, rotate, and scale your objects in your scene. Okay, so let's start off by making sure we have our Select tool enabled over here. You can press the uh, Q hotkey as well, and you can left-click and select any object in your scene. Pretty simple stuff. Now if you want to move an object, let's go ahead and select this green sphere. If you want to move an object, you can use the Move tool. All right? There's also the W hotkey. We'll talk more about the hotkeys a little bit later on. So the Move tool right here, and it'll bring up a movement gizmo, and it'll allow you to move your object along the red x-axis, the green y-axis, and the blue z-axis. And you can also move along any of these axes simultaneously by clicking the respective little boxes there between the two axes. Like this yellow box allows me to move between the X and Y axes simultaneously. Okay, now also pay attention over here, when I have my object selected, there's a transform section in the modify panel. Okay, under attributes, on the, on the transform section, you'll see all these values change according to the movements I'm making. So if I click and drag on my yellow cube there, or yellow square there, we're moving along the X and the Y axes simultaneously. Okay? So that's movement, pretty straightforward, simple stuff. Let's move on to rotation. There's also a rotation uh, tool right here. So you click local rotate. And if I rotate around my blue Z axis, you can see the selection box rotating and the Z value over there in the uh, transform section moving around as well. Okay, and I can move along the uh, red X axis there. And if I click anywhere between here, you can rotate along a bunch of axes simultaneously, all right, just like this. Ooh, okay, pretty cool stuff. And if you want to reset those values, you can also enter in the values manually in your transform section, and like zero, zero, and zero. Okay, we'll be back to normal there. Okay, so the rotation tool is the E hotkey, okay? Uh, and then we'll move to scale, which is the R hotkey. Scale allows you to make your object larger or smaller. If you use the yellow box right here, you can scale it uniformly, just like this. And you can also scale along any of the respective axes individually as well, okay, just like this. Now, if I want to move my object back to the original position and original scale values, what I can do is I can use this reset zero out option here. And this will actually move my object back to the scene root. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and press that, reset zero out, and it'll move it to the scene root. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but before I continue, let's review those hotkeys. So the W hotkey is for movement, just like this. The E hotkey is for rotate, and you can rotate your object. And the R hotkey is for scale, which allows you to scale your object up and down. Now, you may not want to have this gizmo. I highly recommend having this gizmo uh, enabled, but if you don't want it, you can also press Control q and enable, or toggle your gizmo on and off. If you don't have your gizmo on, and you left click and drag when you're scaling, it's just gonna scale uniformly, okay? If you right click and drag, it's going to scale only along the Z axis, okay? Just keep that in mind. If I have my rotation selected, and I left click and drag, it's gonna rotate around the Z axis. If I right click and drag, it's only going to rotate like this, okay? Around the pivot point, which we'll talk about a little bit later. If I have my movement gizmo selected, if I left click and drag, it's gonna move along the X and Y axes. If I scroll my mouse button, it's going to move up and down like this along the Z axis. And if I right click and drag, it's just gonna rotate it, okay? Even though I have the movement gizmo selected, right clicking and dragging will rotate it. But like I mentioned before, I highly recommend uh, pressing Control Q to have your gizmo enabled. It's normally the best and fastest and easiest way to uh, move objects around your scene. And then we can press reset zero and zero out. Now you're probably wondering when I press reset zero, why does it move back to this uh, zeros out all the values? Well, that's because it's moving our prop back to the scene root, okay? So I'm just gonna click and drag and move this a little bit over here. And you can see this is our scene root right here, this little axis, the red X axis, the green Y axis, and the blue Z axis. Okay, now the scene root is basically the dead center of your scene. Okay, and this uh, is important because when we move, if I go ahead and press W, you can see that we have the movement gizmo enabled. However, let's rotate our prop here. Let's rotate it 45 degrees. Uh, we can press the E hotkey and use our blue 
line there to rotate it. Or we can just type in the value in the, val in the field right here, maybe negative 45, just like that. Okay, so now we're at a 45 degree angle. And if I press W, you can see now what happens is our gizmo is pointing in a different direction. However, if I press W again, it's going to move to the world axis. That's because up here for move, we have a world move and a local move. And the local axis will be the local axis for your individual prop. If you want to move along the world axis, you can do so, but you can also move along the individual axis for your prop according to its rotation value. Okay, so I can move along this one right here, this x-axis, and then if I change to my world axis by pressing W again, you can do this. You can press W, 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 and toggle between your world and local axis. Uh, super useful tip there. One more useful little tip that I wanted to mention here as well. Uh, I mentioned you can scale your object uniformly by pressing the R hotkey and this yellow selection box here. You can see everything will scale uniformly if we reset and zero it out. One thing we can also do is we can lock our scale values X, Y, Z. And then if we enter in a value here of like 50, for example, it's going to be half the size. So all the values are going to go back down to 50. And if we enter in like 200, for example, it's going to be double the size. And all the other values will lock to the same value you input. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, when you select different objects in your scene, you may have uh, different items here, different fields in the transform section. Let's just... Uh, Set this back down to 100 here, okay? So right now I have my sphere selected, okay? And all the values right here, we have move, rotate, and scale. However, if I select my character, you can see we also have a transform section, but we don't have scale. We only have move and rotate, okay? So I can rotate my character just like anything else, all right? And I can move it around just like this, okay? I'm using the W and E hotkeys there again. Okay, if I select my camera, we only have the move and rotate as well, okay, just like this. Now you can enter in the values manually here, or you can just, you know, rotate your camera like this in your scene, press the W hotkey, move it up and down, and so on and so forth. Now there's also lights in our scene that we can uh, move around this way as well. We can access the lights by going into the scene manager and twirling down our light section here, and you can see I have a couple of lights in the scene. Now the first light I'll point out is the key light. I like to call this the God light. It's the overall scene light. That is your default light in your scene. It's a directional light. And you can see over here we have the rotation values only. It doesn't matter if we move a key light because it's an overall light, like I mentioned, a God light, but we can rotate it. We can enter in rotation values here, or we can also use the forward slash key, which is a really useful uh, hotkey to learn. When you have your key light selected, press the forward slash key, and it'll bring up a rotation gizmo. And you can see we can rotate our key light just like this all around our scene in different directions. Okay, pretty useful to know that little uh, rotation uh, hotkey there, the forward slash key. If you want to move any of your other lights, these are individual lights which can be modified separately. Let's select this green spotlight and let's make it visible and press the F hotkey to focus on it, to focus our camera on it. And then we can zoom out a little bit. And you can see with this one, we also have move and rotate because the position, the transform position of the light does matter. Whereas with the key light, it doesn't matter. So we can press the W hotkey and bring it all the way down like this and a little bit closer to our scene, maybe somewhere over here. And you can see it's shining over that way. So we can press the E hotkey to rotate it and have it shine directly on our uh, curve man dude's back right there. All right. And we also have things like the global illumination anchor under lights here as well. Let's make that visible. And this one only has the move, okay? It doesn't have rotate or scale because that really doesn't matter in the context of global illumination. But that's a whole can of worms that we can open in a separate tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, make both of these invisible again. And let's take a quick look at animating an object, animating the transform of, of an object, okay? So I'm going to take this uh, green sphere here and we're going to animate it. So I'm going to press F3 and go into my timeline. Now I'm going to close down all the effects and everything and the project and the switcher. Now we have the ball of the green ball. Now I recommend having this object related track option selected because when you select an object, it's going to automatically bring up those tracks, the relevant tracks in the timeline, okay, which makes it easier to animate. Okay, so I have this green box or green sphere rather selected. And if I click and drag in my timeline, I can go maybe to frame like 90 or something. And let's press the W hotkey to bring up our movement gizmo. 
and just click and drag over here a little bit, okay? And you can see that adds a transform keyframe in the transform track, okay? So now we've created an animation. If I left click and drag from here to here, you can see we're moving from one position to the next. Fairly simple stuff. And like I mentioned, uh, rotation and scale values will also create keyframes in the transform track. So if I press the R hotkey and I scale my uh, sphere up just like this, like a dinosaur egg or something, it'll have another, it'll maintain that data in the same keyframe, the transform uh, movement and scale position. However, if I go back to maybe frame 120 or something, I can also scale it down. And even though I don't have any movement data, we still have that scale data, which adds into the transform track keyframe right here. Okay. So then if I press, uh, go back to the first frame, this is going to be my animation, just like that. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. That's your basic simple animation. And that's where all your transform data is stored when you're entering your timeline in the transform track. You can also click up here and see your transform track and hide it just that way as well. Okay. So, uh, pretty simple stuff. Now keep in mind that rotation, scale, and movement are all going to be according to the pivot point on your prop or your uh, object. Okay. So, uh, you can see the, at the, it's basically the bottom center of my uh, sphere is where the, where the gizmo is centered. Okay. Uh, you can find that pivot point by going down here to the pivot section. All right. And you can set the pivot point, but we'll talk about that in a separate tutorial that deals more with pivot points. All right. So I think that's about it for the uh, transform tool. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and make sure you check out our other iClone basics tutorials for all the basics and some quick uh, tricks and tips for using iClone. Uh, so hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching.